Hello, welcome to my presentation on uh, C1 chemistry. And of course, by C1 chemistry, I'm referring to uh, methane and indirectly to the methanol economy. I generally show this PowerPoint lecture presentation to students in my petroleum and natural gas chemistry course. Uh, we offer a uh, degree in petroleum technology here at the University of Pittsburgh, Bradford. And um, I also show this as a starting point in chemistry and the environment and several other courses where I want to introduce students to uh, natural gas and um, the methanol economy. We'll start by uh, introducing you to the potentials and developments in this field. <coughs> Recent concern over availability and costs of petroleum feedstocks has given rise to a growing interest in alternative carbon sources such as natural gas, coal, biomass, shale oil, and tar sands. One potential development is the gasification of all these resources into synthesis gas and its use as a common feedstock for the chemical industry. Such a development would parallel the history of utilizing the myriad number of compounds present in crude oil by having developed uh, routes in the past in which oil is converted to the unifying building blocks of ethene, propene, butadiene, benzene, and the isomeric xylenes. More than 90% of all industrial chemicals originate from these five crude oil derivatives. Uh, an outline, figure one, of the C1 building blocks. We start with the syngas, centrally located carbon monoxide hydrogen, which can lead to um, fine chemicals, methane production, methanol production, carbon dioxide, and, and let us re, uh, remind uh, ourselves that carbon monoxide is a fuel, carbon dioxide is not. We can, uh, for example, extinguish many fires with uh, CO2 uh, gaseous uh, extinguisher, but carbon monoxide indeed is a fuel. And uh, the syngas mixture of carbon monoxide, hydrogen, and to a lesser extent carbon dioxide uh, can uh, in turn be used to produce uh, via fischer tropes methyl formate, and other chemicals. The uh, C1 building blocks. Synthesis gas also forms the basis of C1 chemistry. And under C1 chemistry, in a broad sense, the formation of multi-carbon molecules from single carbon feedstocks is understood. Frequently, however, only the loosely defined body of chemistry and technology contained in the area of synthesis gas-based uh, developments is referred to as the C1 chemistry. Although in the short term, crude oil seems indeed in plentiful supply, it should be remembered that based on existing knowledge, the estimated reserves of crude oil are limited. Long-range synthesis gas will compete with mineral oil and the basic R&D for its future application, which must be done today to have it available when it is needed. Opportunities for C1 chemistry can also be seen considering the following arguments. Availability of our own carbon resources. Countries with huge uh, resources, carbon resources such as coal, natural gas, or biomass may find it beneficial for political or financial reasons to develop their own resources. Innovation. The chances in searching for a competitive advantage are greater where new technology exists. If you come across an unfinished, uh, an unfished lake, you don't have to be a very good fisherman to get your day's catch. However, as an increasing number of people fish that lake, your skill uh, better be good in order for you to avoid starving. Using crude oil derivatives narrows the opportunities for new processes, similar 
technological paths exist for all competitors. Independence, an erratic behavior of feedstock prices, and a shortage in availability makes planning and forecasting very difficult. A reliable, secure feedstock supply and long-term contracts at calculable, calculable prices are the basis of a prosperous industry. Independence also embraces concern for national security aimed at using a country's own available feedstocks. Environmental constraints. In our contemporary world, environmental considerations have developed into an important factor. Processes which burden the environment will be phased out. However, the most critical factor determining the size and speed of the development of C1 chemistry will be the price of crude oil. Low prices will push major developments in this area into the distant future. It's also reasonable to assume that prior to the exclusive use of chemicals derived from feedstocks other than mineral oil, uh, chemicals based on crude oil and chemicals originating from alternate feedstocks will supplement each other. This situation indeed has already arisen. For instance, in Germany, Hirsch uses coal-derived carbon monoxide and diatomic hydrogen to hydroformylate olefins, which stem from crude oil. In the following, special attention will be focused on C1 chemistry based on syngas, methane, and carbon dioxide feedstocks. C1 chemistry based on syngas. Synthesis gas offers many routes to industrial chemicals. They can be classified in a direct and indirect path. The direct path involves methanation, fischer chirps fischer tropes chemistry, and synthesis of oxygenates. The indirect path embraces carbonylation, methanol, and methyl formate chemistry. Table 1 lists a variety of current or high potential carbon monoxide hydrogenation reactions. Here in the table, considering hydrogenation of carbon monoxide, we can see the direct conversion, uh, several scenarios, and notice that the ratio of carbon monoxide to hydrogen is critical. There's also a listing of the loss percentage as water. Now, direct conversion of CO and two moles of hydrogen yield a diatomic hydrogen, molecular hydrogen, yields methanol. Two carbon monoxide and two hydrogen diatomic yields acetic acid. Two CO and two moles of diatomic hydrogen yield methyl formate. Two carbon monoxide and four hydrogens diatomic can yield ethanol. Three carbon monoxides and six diatomic hydrogens can yield propanol. Two carbon monoxides and three moles of diatomic hydrogen yields ethylene glycol. And finally, four carbon monoxides and eight moles of diatomic hydrogen can yield isobutyl alcohol. Now, the ratio of carbon monoxide to hydrogen here is critical. And note also in the production of isobutanol that at a ratio of carbon monoxide to diatomic hydrogen, one to two respectively, you're going to have a substantial loss as water, as much as 50%. So uh, things to consider, various scenarios in the hydrogenation of carbon monoxide, a plentiful supply of chemical platform chemicals or what we used to call chemical feedstock. Two factors are obvious from Table 1. A, the ratio of the carbon monoxide to hydrogen needed is very different. B, various amounts of water are produced. The molecular loss becomes even worse when CO2 is formed besides uh, water. Both the ratio of carbon monoxide to diatomic hydrogen and the formation of water affect the eco uh, economics, the economics of carbon monoxide to hydrogen tech significantly. Now, direct carbon monoxide diatomic hydrogen conversion. The direct conversion deals with the straight hydrogenation of carbon monoxide to yield paraffins, olefins, and oxygen-containing products. Of course, for students first studying organic chemistry, your paraffins are your saturated hydrocarbons, alkanes, and uh, cycloalkanes, cyclic alkanes, and your olefins are alkenes, double bond points of unsaturation in, um, in these type of hydrocarbons. 
Best known in the direct CO hydrogenation is the Fischer-Tropsch synthesis, going back to the 1920s in Germany. And indeed, some of the technology was actually licensed from uh, companies in the United States. Uh, some of the early work here was actually done by engineers in the United States in the 1920s. Well, anyway, the fischer tropsch synthesis can yield a mixture of mainly linear alkanes and or alkenes. Mechanistically, it can be described as a reductive oligomerization, right, short molecular weight oligomers, oligomerization of carbon monoxide following a geometric progression. I refer you to the schultz flory distribution. Chemical engineers working in this uh, field are well aware of this uh, type of progression. With A values close to one broad product distributions are obtained, whereas small A values predominantly yield methane. Therefore, prior to entering a costly research and development program, a simple calculation may help to evaluate whether the mathematically determined product distribution can be balanced on the market. I refer you, to, incidentally, to some handouts. An excellent book is The Methanol Economy, and that was a book co-authored by George Ola with uh, co-editors Gerbert and Prakash. And this is Beyond Oil and Gas, The Methanol Economy, published by uh, Wiley. Uh, VCH, Beyond Oil and Gas, The Methanol Economy, George Ola, of course, a Nobel Laureate in Chemistry uh, from the University of Southern California. Shortly after the oil crisis, many efforts were seen to convert carbon monoxide hydrogen to methane. That would be your uh, solids to uh, natural gas. As a consequence, of the increased search for oil, vast amounts of natural gas were discovered, making SNG, in most instances, an obsolete target. This is the conclusion of Part 1. Please continue along by going to Part 2. Thank you.